another episode as you can see from the uh, beautiful leather sofa we are on a 1260 however today we are doing something different um thanks to brent vaughan at multi hole central he's like do you want to go racing a trimaran and we're like heck yeah yeah let's try racing a trimaran <laughs> so the weather's going to close in it is going to be a little bit um inclement inclement um but we've got wet weather gear and so today we are going to see well, we're going to put our racing skills back to the test. We, when was the last time you and I raced a boat? Mm, ten years ten ago? Years ago. Ten years ago. Come on, mate, give us a He's got a new toy. <laughs> I would use that term very loosely. We won. Yeah. We won a cup. I know, we did win a cup, and that was, I think, a surprise to everyone. It was a surprise to me. We were a good racing team. Were we? Yes. Uh, we won a cup. Yeah, we didn't take it very seriously. We take everything very seriously. <laughs> There's two boats on the horizon. It's a race. It's a race. Um, so listen, yeah, so today's catamaran race, uh, tri trimaran, add another hole. Mm -hmm. Trimaran racing. I hope you enjoy this. It's uh, three holes on the water. Enjoy. of a drizzly grey day in Sydney. We are in Port Hacking and we are about to go for a sail on that thing right there. It's a Corsair, what is it? 760. The only racing I've ever done like on a boat has been on our old boat, the one before Ruby Rose, called Rosie Day, which is a 32 foot hands. It's a really nice boat, but when I say racing, I do mean it in the loosest possible sense of the word. And I must admit, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. I'm excited, I'm really excited. We've got some wind, definitely. Um, I can feel some wind on my face from a quite a protected area. So I reckon once we get out um, into the mouth of the river, it's gonna be much windier. Here he is. I'm, I'm trying to hide from the rain. We're waiting for Brent. I'm pretty I'm pretty keen to get out there, although it'd be nice if the rain stops. That that would be lovely. Yes. And a big thanks to Brent for recreating traditional British weather for our first race in about ten years. But drizzle through driving rain aside, it is lovely to be motoring out, raising the main and getting ready to once again compete against another competent bunch of amateur sailors. And something that we haven't explained to us is how we're going to have to get out onto those outriggers just to put the weight on the windward side of the boat. That's going to be pretty exciting on the upwind legs. So we're getting ready to ease on. Very quickly, Teresa and I went into our old groove, one on each side of the boat, each controlling a winch and a line, mainsail perfectly set. And honestly, between the three of us, I think we got into our kind of like teamwork pretty quickly. 
mainsail absolutely perfectly set maximum drive from that laminate main laminate jib so this is going to be like our bed down wind lake here yeah so this is where we can use that barber hauler out yeah barber hauler um do you go yeah it yeah, goes it down okay fine so but yeah all right and then once we get down to the boys here, we'll throw a jive in. Show you out. Uh, the the um, the Far the right. Can we just bring that back to this way? Uh, yeah. That means behind you. Oh, yeah, so that way we can sort of triangulate yeah. where you want the... You might ease a bit on the sheet, yeah. pull it out a lot further. As this was an amateur race, we were making our own time. So at the 10 minute mark, we did a couple of runs up and down the course just to get the feel for the boat. And with the five minute timer, we positioned ourselves so that as we got to zero seconds, we crossed the line. That is such a difficult thing to do. And you know, props to Brent for getting us across the line. No seconds wasted and we're off to a flying start. What I would say about this little trimaran is it is fast for such a small boat. She absolutely flies. And it's strange, we've never been on a trimaran before, but the fact that it doesn't heal like a monohull, but yet looks to me like a monohull, something to get my head around. I imagine that with further races, I'll get a little bit used to it. But honestly, really exhilarating. The little trimaran absolutely flew along and it made such a difference to our usual casual cruising. We're hitting 11, 12 knots on the upwind legs. It's, you know, flying along, the, you know, spray in your face, all pretty amazing. And uh, I kind of, I do love racing. I never want to do it full time, but you know, sitting on those outriggers, kind of spray in your face, it was a lot of fun. And honestly, the fact that we actually seem to be winning made a big difference to us. These amateur round the cans races go on in just about all yacht clubs around the world. Whether they're evening races or weekend races, there is no faster way to learn how to sail a boat than to go and volunteer to race in your local club races. And for the last leg towards the last mark, very nice and smooth. I think we came in third on adjusted time, but honestly, for a, a novice crew, let's call us novices, it was a whole heap of fun. Something very different to what we normally do. And yeah, just a, a lovely afternoon on the water. And as I've said before, any afternoon on the water is better than an afternoon in the office. So yeah, look, thank you so much to Brent. Really lovely to be out small boat racing again. I haven't done it for about two years since I headed back to my home port. So uh, again, something different for you. I hope you enjoyed it. I had an absolutely cracking time. Yeah. I have to say that when we arrived there and it was raining and it was cold and it was gray, I was like, are we really doing this? Cause like, it's like beer o'clock and yeah, I'm getting onto a boat about to be rained on. Yeah. Um, well, we got, look, that was yesterday, today the sun's shining and you know. Exactly. But I just had the most amazing time. And I think that, um, Brent, I have to say, if Brent is watching this, thank you so much for offering to take us out. I mean, I know that, you know, you need a crew and whatever, but I'm sure you could have found someone. Brent was more than capable of sailing that boat single-handedly. That's true. He's a very, very good sailor, actually. Yeah. I, and you know what? To me, the mark of a man is how well you, you know, the, the cut of your jib and how well you sail. And he can sail. So again, thanks, Brent. That yeah. was amazing. Would I live on a little trim run like that? No. Um, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a day sailor. It is literally a day sailor that you trailer around. But super fun super fast the acceleration is nuts it's on that so nuts um yeah a lot of fun yeah so it was very fun something different not something we ordinarily do or probably we'll do again i would do it again there you sure. go anyone Brent? yeah i'm your girl if I'll... you want if you want race crew <laughs> i have will be smoking a pipe and just sitting in a snug drinking a lovely warm pint while watching her getting splashed anyway <laughs> hope you enjoyed that that's again um tram man racing so um we'll be back again next week with another uh, look into sailing life on the catamaran. So goodbye. Goodbye.
Good morning, all. It is time for another update from Ho Chi Minh City about Ruby Rose 2 and the Sea Wind 1370. These photos were sent to us on the 17th of July, so the patrons got them, I think, three days after we received them. What I want to show you here is the inside of the boat. This is hull number one, but something I want to really kind of emphasize here is highlighted in pink. This is the new stringer system. It is a grid system and is a very new style of technology. It has been used on high-end power boats before, but using this as a system rather than the traditional stringers means that you've got a lot of weight saving while maintaining the strength of the boat. And from this vantage point, while we're looking down on the boat, we can also see the black areas far more clearly where they've infused the hull with carbon fibre for strength. So all along, especially on that port side, you can see the black around the windows all along the hull line reinforced with carbon fibre across the bridge deck. And then, of course, that bulkhead. So, yeah, all coming along really, really quickly. And this next set of photos shows the fiberglass mouldings for the interior, almost all bonded into place now. And with these in place, it gives us a good idea, or rather some idea, of what the interior of the boat is going to look like for volume. And in these final images, I want to show you this is the starboard side forward hull. Now, for me, this is super exciting because, yes, this is where my workshop is going to be, or should I say our workshop? We've been pretty excited since we saw the initial renders of the workshop, but now seeing it actually in the mouldings, and this is where the workshop is going to be, it really does look like our Blue Water Cruiser is coming to life. So listen, I hope you enjoyed this. We will be back with lots more episodes, but also updates on the build of Ruby Rose 2 and the Sea Wind 1370. If you haven't already done so, feel free to subscribe, and we'll be back again next week with another episode. So goodbye. <laughs>